Sadly, it looks like the age of Batflick is done. And will the Warner Brothers Discovery merger do anything at all? Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flicks. My name is Chris Wong. Ben Affleck has said numerous times, at least two or three times, that he is done with IP movies and being Batman, and the last appearance he's going to be Batman is in the Flash movie. Well, today he had a great conversation with his friend Matt Damon and Entertainment Weekly, and this was a little excerpt about his time being Batman. I had a really nadir experience, and nadir means lowest point in his life, around Justice League for a lot of different reasons, not blaming anybody Buddy, there's a lot of things that happened, but really what it was is that I wasn't happy. I didn't like being there. I didn't think it was interesting. And then some really beep things, awful things happened. But that's when I was like, I'm not going to do that anymore. So to me, what this means was that after Batman v Superman, he just didn't feel like being Batman anymore, but he had to do Justice League. And most likely to fulfill a contract because this was back in 2016 in the Hollywood Reporter. In a Hollywood Reporter interview with WME IMG's co-CEOs Ari Emanuel and Patrick Whitesell, Whitesell reveals how many movies Affleck has currently signed up for when it comes to DC's Caped Crusader. He's contracted to do at least Justice League 1 and 2, so at least three times wearing the cape, he says, adding there's a script that he's written that is really cool, Batman idea, so that's out there as an option. In addition to the movies White Cell mentioned, Affleck's Batman also will make a cameo appearance in August's Suicide Squad. So judging from what Ben Affleck said there, looks like he was already unhappy prior to even doing Justice League. There was a drinking problem, he had marital problems, and he was just very depressed at that time. And being Batman and having to do the reshoots just made it a lot worse. And speaking to Matt Damon, this revealed something really interesting. In fact, I talked to you about it and you were a principal influence on that decision. I want to do the things that would bring me joy. Then we went and did Last Duel and I had fun every day on this movie. So it looks like Matt Damon was a big influence for him quitting Batman. As you recall from last year, he had a friend that told him that he better quit being Batman before it kills him. So it's kind of cool to hear that Matt Damon, his best friend, actually saved his life by telling him to quit being Batman. Looks like Batman has affected Ben Affleck a lot more than just the reshoots. It was just the whole thing altogether. In fact, in this article, he seems to be supportive of independent movies, smaller dramas, and not big IP giant blockbuster movies anymore. He doesn't want those event-sized movies. He knows that the theaters are all going to be about those big event movies. He even said Marvel Universe. So it seems like he's not into that at all anymore and realizes that the audiences that watches his movies are all on streaming. So it is unfortunate that he can't be Batman anymore, but I'm pretty happy that he's happy not being Batman anymore. Even though the studio really wants him to come back as Batman, they wanted him to make that Batman movie, they wanted him to make that Batman mini HBO Max series, but seeing that Ben Affleck truly, truly, truly didn't want to be Batman anymore, you can't argue with that. He doesn't want to be Batman anymore. Well, what do we do? Because he was contracted for Justice League 1 and 2, they probably took his Justice League 2 contract or his Batman contract and used that for the Flash movie instead. And that's why before Ben Affleck said yes to the Flash, he decided to put his own notes in. Notes that he had reserved for his own Batman movie to be put in the Flash so that his idea of being Batman in his own Batman movie is inserted into the Flash movie. That way, he can finally say goodbye to that idea altogether. But the studio has a problem. They cannot have a no Batman in the DCEU. So whether or not it was Andy Muschietti's idea or the studio's idea to put Michael Keaton in the Flash movie so that he could be this mentor or even a Batman role for the foreseeable future, who knows? And it's interesting because we've already saw signs and clues that this new universe was definitely going to happen. In fact, J.K. Simmons talked a little bit about it not too long ago. I was as surprised as I was when Marvel came back to ask me to do Jameson, that they were coming to me to play Batgirl's father, Commissioner Gordon, again in this new version of the universe. 
We've already had lots of discussions about the script and how to play everything. I'm excited by the cast and the directors and looking forward to diving back into the DC multiverse. It was right there. New version of the universe. Does this new timeline look like? In fact, this little leak of a new timeline actually went on Reddit months and months ago. The Flash 2022 timeline reset. New DCEU canon. In which it will start with Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 1984, Batman 1989, Batman Returns, Man of Steel, etc., etc. Man of Steel! At least that means Henry Cavill still exists. From the looks of things right now, and we'll have to wait and see when we see the movie, it looks like Ben Affleck will truly be erased from the new timeline. Because if this new universe timeline is true, that means Batman v Superman and Justice League, nor Zack Snyder's Justice League, exists. The current most indication of this was this mural that was spotted on the Batgirl set. And yeah, this is not exactly Michael Keaton and Robin. They seem to be like photoshopped from these two other pictures. But that Batman is definitely more closer to the Michael Keaton Batman than the Ben Affleck Batman. In which case, it seems like this Ben Affleck's Batman does not exist in this new timeline. Which makes me a little bit curious why they didn't just recast Ben Affleck. The studio went out of their way to erase that version of the character entirely. They didn't roadie solve this at all. Either way, if they had recasted Ben Affleck, people will still get mad. Just as mad as people are now with bringing in Michael Keaton's Batman. Now, like I said, there's a lot of sides to this. Not everybody's happy and not everybody's mad. Which brings into the conversation about the Warner Brothers Discovery merger happening in mid-2022. And there's really three different things that I think could possibly happen with this merger. The first thing that could happen is the easiest one. Discovery could come in here and do absolutely nothing at all. Meaning they're going to come in, let Warner Brothers do business as usual. Which happens a lot of times in these mergers. Like the, for the first few years, they're not going to do anything. Because they don't have the experience or the manpower to turn over the other company. And so a lot of times they just come in and says, business as usual, go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. And then maybe a few years, something will happen. The second thing they could do is actually be involved in the process of the DCEU. They could see the things that are working and they could see things that are not working. And this is the part where it's possible, maybe, that they could see the potential of Zack Snyder's Justice League and decide to ask Zack, hey, could you come in and finish your vision? Which is part two and three. In which case, if that were the case, I think Ben Affleck would be okay to coming back as Batman for another movie. Because in his mind, it's for Zack and it's just a one-off. He dies in Justice League 2. Or if not, he'd be filming for two and three in one single shoot and then never be Batman ever again. Or the third thing that Discovery could do, and this is the worst case scenario and depends on any of this DCEU projects are working, you, the audience, will determine that whether you buy tickets or not that instead of picking or choosing discovery may just pull the plug on the whole thing altogether bringing in their own crew and says we're gonna make a new superman a new batman a new wonder woman a new justice league everything reset to zero so that everything is their own creation without any baggage. So nobody really knows what Discovery is going to do in mid-2022, or if anything at all, and there are many possible ways this could affect the DCEU, but one thing's for sure in the entertainment business. Money is always the driving force, and without that same-day HBO Max experience, we got a 45-day theatrical window, it will all be on the box office. And probably on the critic reviews too, you know, they like that stuff. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Well, what do you think about Ben Affleck not wanting to be Batman again? What do you think Discovery is going to do? Share your thoughts in the comments down below.